Welcome everyone to the Jensen Bivens Museum of Natural History. Today's subject, natural selection among mosquitoes. Today's episode is brought to you by Archie Richad. <laughs> Say hello, Archie. What? No, I'm not Archie. <laughs> hello everyone, I'm Archie Richad, and today we're going to be talking about mosquitoes? Yeah, it's actually a mos mosquitoes. And I just what? Just asked mosquitoes? You're telling me that it's been mosquitoes this entire time? Anywho, today we're talking about the natural selection of mosquitoes. The human blood-sucking mosquitoes. But if you want to get down to the specifics, scientifically they're called the 80s aegypti, but no one really calls them that. Well, first things first, how are mosquitoes different from each other? Well, to answer your question, we're going to separate the 3,500 species of mosquitoes into two groups. The first group will be the portion of mosquitoes that feed on the blood of animals. The second group will be the portion that feeds off the blood of humans. The reason mosquitoes are attracted to certain organisms is due to a specific genetic preference, where they are either attracted to the blood of humans or animals. The Aedes aegypti mosquito is specifically attracted to human blood. But if you want to get down to detail, human praying mosquitoes are attracted to the high levels of protein, iron, and amino acids found in human blood. Now let's get down to the natural selection part of all this. How did there come to be so many human praying mosquitoes today? Well that, my friends, is all because of selective pressure. Selective pressure is an environmental aspect that causes a group of organisms to die out. For example, the visual shown before you shows that the wolf is the selective pressure, as the wolf preying on those rabbits causes that rabbit population to decline. Well, because they... they've been eaten. Well, that same concept can be applied to mosquitoes. Mosquitoes get their nutrients from the blood they consume. So what happens if mosquitoes don't drink enough blood, you ask? Well, they don't survive. And that's exactly the case here. There are currently 7.8 billion people on Earth, and that's more than enough to feed the population of human praying mosquitoes. But unfortunately for the mosquitoes that don't drink human blood, they aren't having the same kind of success. The mosquitoes that don't drink human blood have to rely on finding regular animals to get their blood from, which are a lot less common. This ultimately causes the genetic variation that leads mosquitoes to be attracted to human blood more beneficial as they get more food. But that's not all. The high population rates of the human praying mosquitoes are not limited to their food. You see, mosquitoes repopulate by laying their eggs in water. But what's the problem if they do that all year? Well, that's the catch. They can't. As global warming continues to affect us all, it also creates a lot of dry seasons. This in turn limits the amount of water and moisture there is for mosquitoes when they want to breed. Human praying mosquitoes, of course, have found a way to breed even during dry seasons, as human urbanization has played a huge role in the population increase of mosquitoes. See, naturally, human praying mosquitoes are attracted to the scent of blood, and when they follow the human populations, the mosquitoes will also find that we have a large supply of water, a year-long supply of water that the human praying mosquitoes can use to keep breeding. However, there is a selective pressure that is negatively affecting the mosquitoes that drink human blood. Back in 2015, scientists created millions of male mosquitoes that when mated with females, the resulting offspring would die in infancy. This caused the population to decrease drastically. Over time, the positive population increase fell to whoever had the benefit of a higher repopulation and food consumption. In the end, the human praying mosquitoes would increase at a higher rate. Non-human praying mosquitoes didn't experience the same benefits from preying on lesser animals and repopulated slower. At this point, you can say that the traits of mosquitoes that feed off of human blood are far superior than other mosquitoes, as their adaptations allow them to provide for themselves far better, far faster, and far more efficiently. The human praying mosquitoes' a strong genetic attraction to the odor of human blood has led them to follow the human masses and have the benefit of using their large amounts of water and blood for breeding which in the end allowed human praying mosquitoes to breed all year long, which strengthened their overall fitness and increased the amount of mosquitoes that feed off of human blood. So are mosquitoes that feed off of human blood the best at surviving? Yes. And do we like that? <laughs> 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 we don't want that, so our best scientists are on the job right now seeking ways to prevent us from being mosquito magnets. Anywho, thank you all for coming to the Jensen Bivens Museum of Natural History. Have a good one, and see you next time.